Yo, guys! It's the new year, baby. Life is good. The sun's about to go down in about 10, 15 minutes. So we're trying to get it in from today because we've been working on our NFT commercial. Now, the whole way we're gonna make money, our church is gonna make money, Temple 420 is gonna make money, is by selling NFTs. We're at war and it's time you people wake up! Because woke means you're a loser. Because woke means you're a loser. Everything woke turns to shit. Because woke means you're a loser. So I talk a lot about failure. This idea of failure. Catastrophic failure. And I did not stutter when I said that. So an NFT is a non-fungible token. And it's part of like the cryptocurrency space. And what we did is we made some parody money, like some humorous looking dollars that are for the church. And the reason we did that is to make fun of the fact that money is just a concept anyways, that, that something of value that you trade for. And we used to do gold and silver in the United States. It was convenient because the money was real. Gold and silver have been money since biblical times. If you remember, Joseph was sold into slavery for 20 pieces of silver and Jesus was sold by Judas Iscariot for the same price basically 30 pieces of silver and that was the price of a slave had gone from 20 pieces of silver to the Egyptian times to 30 pieces of silver in the Roman times approximately let's say they're $25 a piece right now $20 times 30 would be 600 bucks so a human life costs about 600 bucks. I bet that's what you could buy a slave for in Libya today too, since they have open slave markets there since we destroyed that country and sent it back into the Stone Age. The Stone Age, what? <laughs> Anyways, uh, we here at Temple 420, we here, me and Mario, a couple of us members, it's starting to grow. People are picking up. We haven't done any advertising. We've been afraid as soon as we advertise, they're going to pull us right off because we've been arrested and shut down before. For some reason, our church is the most dangerous church in America. And Biden and his administration are warning people, don't go all religious on us, that the religious people don't want to take the vaccine. The darn vaccine is full of, it's full of shit. And she's a federal employee? Oh, this is bullshit. Myocarditis due to the vaccine. They're not going to blame the vaccine. They are not reporting. They are not reporting. They are not reporting. They are not reporting. Are you Jody O'Malley? the Department of Health and Human Services. This is a United States government identification. We don't want to take it because of her religious beliefs. And she was coerced into taking it. Because my faith lies in God. And this is evil at the, the highest level. You have the FDA, you have the CDC, that are both supposed to be protecting us. I work for Health and Human Services um, with a Indian Health Services branch for the Native Americans. As you saw a 15 year old with blood clots? 15 year old, normal weight, healthy child. No reason for him to have a blood clot. I think they want to do 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 There's report. Nobody, because it takes over a half an hour to write the damn. Co workers had taken the vaccine and she didn't want to. She had went throughout this entire pandemic working in the intensive care unit, it pretty much was a COVID unit. Got her first dose of vaccine after surviving this entire pandemic. She didn't want to take it. She didn't want to take it because of her religious beliefs. Nobody should have to decide between their livelihood, being a part of the team in the hospital, or take the vaccine. Right now, um, what is plaguing this country is the spirit of fear. You know, like what kind of person would I be if I if I knew all of this, this is evil. This is evil at the, the highest level. Don't go all religious on us. That the religious people don't want to take the vaccine and they're, they're not going to accept our exemption anymore. I truly believe, and I've been saying this for almost a year, year and a half, that the fact that you can't buy or sell without this vaccine or without the mask or whatever else, these are signs that this is the end times. The sixth seal of revelation has been opened by these guys in the white coats riding the white horse. And basically what they're doing is 
is they're pretending to be Jesus in a way. The pharmaceutical companies are in general because Jesus came to heal, to cast out demons and all these people and they're controlling people with witchcraft and fear. And the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear because love takes away fear. A lack of love is fear. So these guys are selling fear, trying to create like mass trauma on the society. And I have experienced all of this in my life because of being arrested, because of losing my right to free speech, my right to my religion, my right to bear arms, uh, my right to my own privacy in my own house. When I was on probation, my probation officer could walk in my house 24 hours a day, go digging through my wife's underwear drawer if he wanted. And that was what the what he told me. He goes, nothing in your house is private anymore. I have no Fourth Amendment right, no right to search and seizure. They stole my money before they ever convicted me. My Fifth Amendment rights, I had no right not to incriminate myself. I had to get naked and pee. They stripped me naked and searched up my asshole for preaching the word. So I became a little bit bitter and angry and I was homeless for a couple years, but I, I just kept my faith and I knew God was gonna bless me and eventually he did. Oh, and I watched the video the other day and I was upset with Trevor Bay, my godson. God's son. See, interesting word too. Um, he's an idiot. I can't help but say the truth there. But I was a little harsh and not forgiving and it was affecting me because every time I get angry and I and so what I think we have to do is not only forgive the other person but forgive ourselves too because and realize it was my fault. I shouldn't have let him in my house. He had come to me. He was in a bad situation. He's Michael Bay's fucking nephew. Um, had I really thought about the situation, his own family could have helped him but they hated him so much. They rejected him so much that he's a third 30 year old guy living on the streets of America because he's an asshole. He's a thief and a liar, but I didn't call the cops on him. I'm never gonna call the cops on him. And I kind of forgave him yesterday in my heart. I still think he's a loser asshole, but it was me when I was getting all upset that was the one paying for it. And it was like, why should I be upset? And I thought, okay, well, what did I do wrong in the situation? And what I did was I invited a homeless person into my space and that was probably not a good idea. And I did it in, in my own way to take advantage of the whole Michael Bay situation. His uncle's a famous director. He goes, oh, I'm gonna make your movie, blah, blah, blah. He says, this could be my, my first film from Trevor Bay. And I, oh, well, that's cool, nephew of Michael Bay. And so in my mind, I thought, oh, this dude could be a rock star. He's the nephew of one of the greatest directors in American film make. And so yeah, I wanted him on my team and he's my godson. I hadn't spent time with him in a long time. He stayed in touch with my kids, but it turned out to be a negative thing. So that was my fault. So I had to forgive myself, forgive Trevor, and really realize whatever the material things that I lost are is no big deal. My cup will continue to run over. So I don't know why I was getting so frustrated and upset. Oh, I know why. Because I felt hurt personally. And that's how I felt about America when I first realized America wasn't the country I thought it was when I got arrested at my temple. And I started like looking into these cons quote conspiracy theories that all seem to be true now. Anyways, we got to use Jesus as an example. He is our example. Be forgiving. It's not about the money. It's about the love. So Trevor, wherever you are, if you happen to see this, Wish you the best, buddy. Hope you pay me back one day. But I am not going to report you to the police for stealing my stuff. I am going to let God handle it. Oh, and that was the thing. God will take care of it. We can't take it into our, our, our own hands. And you got to let things go sometimes and focus on the future. Not the future, the present. The right here and the right now. Where are we in our lives? And what can we do to be helpful to the body? Our personal body and our friends, our family, the community, our country, and then the world. Real simple shit. And don't get worried about things you cannot handle all right guys the ego where's the body anyways trevor yeah we hope you pay us back buddy we we don't hate you as a person we're praying for you but it doesn't change the past we're at war and it's time you people wake up cena accidentally called taiwan a country he apologized he wasn't educated on the situation at hand, and he spoke. Because woke means you're a loser. Because woke means you're a loser. Everything woke turns to shit. Because woke means you're a loser. Because woke means you're a loser. Come on, sauce, bitch, you on this!